Entering UEFI Continuum in five, four, prepare for impact, three, two, one. Oh, oh, enabling C states, enabling C states. Low line calibration can't take much more. Oh, that was awful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's just hang out in the UEFI for a little while. If you're watching this video, it's because you're watching. Never mind. But here's the UEFI, <laughs> and it's uh, stable, unlike us. Yes, <laughs> entirely stable. <laughs> so uh, we've we've jumped in here into the UEFI, and uh, we've actually spent a lot of work on this. As you guys know, historically, um, you know, we really pride ourselves on our UEFI. You know, we actually had a conversation about this a little bit earlier. Um, just, you know, talking about that the UEFI is actually a, a lot more than just the graphical limits, and we're definitely going to talk about the new features and functionalities that we've introduced, but there's a lot of things that you don't see that exist in the back end that have to do things with, like, auto rules and optimization, interoperability and compatibility, so that ultimately you have a board that's reliable, it's stable, it works with the components that you're adding in, whether it's going to be SSDs, add-in controllers, graphics cards, um, you know, even memory. All that stuff is something that we have to work in in terms of being implemented in the back end of the UEFI. And we, you know, we need to ultimately make sure that also across the long term, we work towards interoperability, making sure that you have a platform that's going to be reliable and it's going to work for you guys. And, uh, you know, we're definitely maintaining that history and that lineage of what we've done here. I'd also recommend make sure to go back and check out the actual UEFI overview that we did for Z87, because a lot of you guys that might be coming over from previous platforms and that aren't familiar with the updates that we've done, there was a lot of really cool stuff that you introduced to the UEFI last generation that, of course, is being maintained for Z97. So what we're going to do is a little bit more brief in nature, and we're just going to focus on the specific Z97 edition. So definitely make sure to check out the video that we did last time covering the new additions that we did for Z87. So um, here we're at the brand new easy mode interface. And in the new easy mode interface, you can see that we've gone ahead and revamped a couple of specific points. First off here in the lower left-hand corner, you can see that we've got fan profiling that's active. So this is kind of cool, just visual recognition to let you know every single fan that you have connected is actively spinning and it's actually rotating and let you know essentially that they're alive, that they're, that they're, um, that they're being acknowledged by the system and that everything is working the way it's supposed to. So it's cool visual representation. I'm mesmerized. It, it is kind of cool and kind of get they're lost at looking you know, at them rotating. Um, they're all spinning at different speeds. I'm like, whoa. And it, the cool thing about that is actually is that you can see that it's contextually aware. So the faster the RPM is, the faster the actual fan animation will be. So we've kind of even put in that, like, you know, precise level of uh, representation of how the fan works. Now we still maintain uh, nice little options like our easy single one-touch XMP. So, of course, if you're not using auto-tuning, which automatically enables XMP or the hardware XMP switch, then, of course, you could just quickly jump in here, select your profile, and you'd be good to go. We, of course, got real-time temperature display information, so this is actually going to be a live, real representation of your temperature so for you guys when you're first setting up your systems. Uh, this is a great way that you can just go ahead and know right off the bat, is my CPU okay? Are the temperatures okay? What's the corresponding voltage? You can, of course, see memory recognition in terms of not only the vendor, the density, but the frequency. You can then also see full real-time connection status for all your SATA-enabled devices, whether it's going to be an optical drive, SSD, mechanical hard drive. This is a cool new addition where we have single touch RAID enablement. So that means that you can go ahead and enable this and don't have to actually go through the Intel Option ROM manager to be able to enable a RAID function. Just so right there in the, in yeah, the easy mode. Right? Yeah, so it simplifies the process quite a bit more. And right here, of course, we have the drag and drop boot priority. So you can quickly go ahead and select which devices you boot to. And from here, we, of course, have one touch options that are essentially the same as the TPU and the EPU switches. So you can either run here in stock operation, you can shift over into optimal mode, which is going to give you uh, essentially a TPU stage over clock so about like 4.3 gigahertz or you can go ahead and switch into the power saving mode which is the same as that EPU switch which is the undervolt you know for better power consumption lower load temperature but doesn't affect performance so you can actually do quite a bit here from just the initial easy mode screen um, and you can also go ahead and now for this generation have full graphical fan tuning so you can see here we have a representation of each single uh, fan header that we have on the system here you're gonna have the ability to toggle between PWM or DC mode operation and if we go ahead and click on the profiles, you can see that actively they'll go ahead and adjust in real time. And if we want, we can go to manual. And when we go to manual, you'll have the uh, uh, adjustment option of being able to go ahead and define a manual fan curve. So you can see right here, we can just go ahead and select all of these in real time. So we go ahead and select this guy. You can see right here, we've got manual fan curves available to you. Now, how large is this UEFI? Um, as far as the specific size, it's still not entirely full. And the really? reason why it's still not entirely full is because we still have corresponding microcode updates as well as compatibility updates that we have planned. But right. it's definitely, uh, it's getting on the larger side in terms yeah. of all the functionality that we're enabling. But, um, you know, we're doing our best to try to manage the consistency of having this UEFI be consistent across all the Z97 series. So 
from there, you can see that this is a really big introduction that we've also gone ahead and enabled. So let's just go ahead and exit out because we've got some other cool points to show. So we'll jump into the advanced mode. And in here, you'll see another new addition, which is going to be this persistent, uh, persistent hardware monitor screen. So you can see at any stage in the UEFI, if I go over to you know, the My Favorite tab, uh, which we'll go ahead and touch on in a second, or if we go over to you know the monitor or advanced, doesn't matter what section of the UEFI you're in, you're always going to see your frequency, your temperature, your voltages. Here's your memory frequency voltages, uh, the actual uh, capacity of the memory, the density, and then your corresponding PSU voltages. So that's a nice kind of persistent information to consistently see available to you there, right? Now for uh, the My Favorites tab, this has been expanded for this generation. So if you guys remember, we've had My Shortcut My Favorites. And now for what you're gonna be able to do in this generation is you can head over into this and you're gonna be able to customize it. So if we head over, head over into the environment, you're gonna see that essentially you have your UEFI broken down to you in a full kind of tree structure. So if you want, you can go in and you see I had already AI overclock tuner set in that tab. So I could go ahead and maybe add my core ratio if I wanted to. I can click and add that. If I want my DRAM frequency, I can go ahead and add that. And you could keep go ahead and add all the items that you want. Once you go ahead and exit out of that, you're going to see that you're going to have that ability uh, to be able to, yeah, uh, you're going to have that ability to have those items be present in the My Favorites tab. So you can see those are immediately shown to you there. So the great thing about that is you can customize the UEFI in a very specific environment uh, that's really applicable to you. So you don't have to go jump to all the other portions of the UEFI. Just put, you know, the 10, 12, maybe 13, 14 options that you consistently use, and those will all be available to you, whether it's your multiplier, your voltage, you know, SATA operation, you know, maybe the specific fan speeds that you always want to tweak or adjust. You can just have one dedicated tab that's going to give you all the specific options that you want. saves so much time. Yeah. It's having a, to, the navigation takes up more time than actually tweaking sometimes. Yeah, no, definitely. And it's just nice to know that you have all those uh, points available to you there. So from there, we're just going to click over to... Q fan control. So Q, Q fan control is what we talked about where we have the graphical fan tuning, but working in conjunction for this, we're going to head over to the monitor tab. So under the monitor tab, sorry guys, my mouse is a little bit sticky here on this guy. Uh, you can see that we have a Q fan tuning option. Mm -hmm. So this is really cool because what we've done here is gone ahead and incorporated the actual auto fan calibration technology that we've had in the auto, uh, the, excuse me, the auto calibration that's part of fan expert three in AI suite. So we can go ahead and select this, and when we select it, it's actually going to give us the ability to do the full fan calibration. So just like you, just like in the software. Yeah, um, and the great benefit to this, though, is historically we've had some people that have said, hey, you know, sometimes the values that you give for the fan operation inside the UEFI are higher than I'd like them to be. I want them to be lower. The problem that we've always had is that sometimes if we give you the lowest values available, you could be defining a value that actually we wouldn't know if the fan would be able to trigger on. Essentially, it might not be able to actually kick kick on and be active. Right, because some fans can't spin at such a low RPM, they just go off. Correct. And so right. in that situation, okay. this is really the only way that we can guarantee you actually have the entire range available to you in terms of this tuned result. So once again, just like what we have in Fan Expert 3 within the operating system, now the results that you're going to have available in terms of what you can define are specific to your entire sets of fans. Whether they're going to be DC fans or whether they're going to be PWM fans, it's going to be tuned specifically to your exact environment, and you'll be able to go in there. So once this is finished, we're also going to take a look at some of the new options that we have at being able to define more granular points of control for how you set up your fan tuning. So you can see it's a pretty quick process, and that's actually for pretty much all the fans that we have connected. We've got, of course, the two fans for our cooler 1250. We've got a uh, uh, back 120 millimeter fan. We have two front 120 millimeter fans, and then we have an additional 120 millimeter fan, uh, which is here uh, towards kind of our storage bay array, which helps to bring in air across our GPU or uh, the centralized portion of our motherboard. Yeah, so you've nice got tunnel going through, yeah. Yeah, exactly. We've got more than enough airflow. So we can see right here now it reports to us uh, an update, of course, of our new fan detection RPM uh, limits. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and head here to the monitor tab. And once we go to the monitor tab, if we go ahead and scroll down, we're going to see right here that, of course, we've got all our fan controls. And if we were just go ahead and select, let's say, uh, chassis fan one, right? You, we can go ahead and uh, click in this drop down tab, and you can see right there we've got DC or PWM. So that's where, like I said, on every single header, you can go ahead and map that. If we go ahead and jump down here to two, you can see it's already been set to DC mode operation. And we have the uh, actual low limit, and you can see it's already in manual. And for this generation, we've actually added even more granularity. So you have minimum, 
middle, and maximum fan duty cycle. So you have a huge amount of granularity at how the actual fan responds up. But this isn't even as granular as it gets. Keep in mind that even in the operating system, we allow you to, uh, to drive the actual fan ramping policy. So even in between actually how fast it ramps, you can control that. So how fast the actual fan is either revving up or revving down. So there's even me, even more control that you have in the OS. But this is pretty impressive stuff and also new for this generation. You can see we've got ahead and given you the ability that if you want to have the fan entirely stop, you can also define that within the UEFI. Now, what you also see right here as far as chassis fan, too, you can see that you have a source input, right? And this is what we've been talking about with Fan Expert 3, where you have that granularity and control that you can set the actual uh, input source. So for the CPU, from the motherboard, from the VRM, the PCH, or even from that temperature probe that we talked about that you can plug into the motherboard and put towards any location. So just to clarify that what this is going to do is it's going to uh, be active based upon whatever, you know, temperature reading from whatever part of the motherboard. Correct. So it's just going to give you a lot more granularity because historically any one of those fans that you had in the system would always respond based off the CPU temperature, right? But now we can go ahead and have, let's say, those chassis fans that are blowing air across the central part of the VRM, excuse me, the, the lower part of the board or across our storage array, right? Those can be specifically assigned to, let's say, either the temperature input or maybe the motherboard temperature or the PCH temperature, right? right. Which makes a lot more sense. So you get to really fine tune uh, the ability to be able to customize how actual the fans respond and work. And keep in mind, as we talked about in the Sabertooth overview, for the Sabertooth board, you've got 15 inputs. Right. So you have an insane level of control over where you want the fans to be able to respond It'll be to. be a huge drop-down list of all the different sources. Correct. And that's applicable for every single header that's on the board. So pretty impressive. Although, keep in mind, of course, for CPU and CPU optional, we restrict you from being able to change that input because of pretty much those fan headers should yeah. always be applying to the CPU. Mm -hmm. So it would be pretty much in relation to all the chassis fan headers. So with that, that gives you pretty much a quick overview of some of the new changes that we've made overall. And like I said, make sure to check out the Z87 uh, where we introduce, and I think, over 15 new options like SATA port renaming, quick note, um, recollection of changes that you made to the UEFI at the end when you actually go to save and exit, and a whole lot of other really cool functions and features. So for you guys that are checking out these new boards, I really feel that you're not only going to get a, a great foundation in terms of compatibility, performance, interoperability, and stability with the UEFI, which is really important, but also in terms of just core feature set and usability, I really think that's the best in class UEFI. It's uh, very slick. Yeah, I mean, pretty cool. It's so slick that it uh, makes me angry because now anyone can do it, and I'm not elite anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to always be elite to me, man. <laughs> all right. Uh, if you guys uh, want to see all the other technology that Asus has added on, I guess um, not added on, but all their exclusive technology that they've uh, come up with just for, you know, Z97, go ahead and click on the screen. It'll take you all the other videos. And, um, you know, you guys can also see all the different platforms, get, get an overview. That's what it's all about. Get a little bit of an education. So we'll see you in those other videos. Mm -hmm.